Here we're going to be looking at the specific identification inventory method. This is where this, we identify the specific items here in our inventory that we're going to sell here and we determine the cost of the ending inventory and the cost of goods sold based on the specific items used here in our inventory. And for example here, uh, let's go down and look at it here. We're going to have a, a certain date here. We're going to have purchase a certain quantity of inventory at a specific price here. And we've got a number of purchases here for the period here. And then we're going to have a sale here. And we're going to have sold 4,000 of the units that we purchased here for the period. And we purchased the total number of 10,000 units. Now when we're working with these examples, we would start with a beginning inventory. But I'm not going to do it for this uh, example here just to uncomplicate it. So let's just say we have a total units here of 10,000 in our inventory here and those represent our purchases here for the period and we're going to sell 4,000 of them here. So our ending inventory, simple math here, we're going to end up with 6,000 units here in our ending inventory. Now we'll come back here and look at these, uh, this concentrate on these 4,000 units that are sold here and we're going to identify where these sales came from or where, where which inventory items we used to uh, uh, for the sale here of these 4,000 items. So for this specific identification method here, uh, we take in this case uh, the 6-1 and the June 1st date here, those purchased items, we're going to sell 1,000 of those units here at their specified price here of $8 per unit gives us $8,000 here for the amount of the inventory that we sold here. And then uh, for the uh, next on June 15th here, the 6-15th date here, we're going to the remaining amount we're going to specify specify from that inventory amount here. We're going to have sold 3,000 of those here. So we have uh, purchased here 6,000 and we're going to specify that we're going to uh, sell 3,000 of those units here. So uh, those are at $8.80 each. So 3,000 here at $8.80 each gives us a value here of our inventory that we sold of $26,400. So our total amount here sold we had 4,000 units here, and the total value of those sales, uh, our cost of the not the cost of the inventory on those sales here was 34,400 dollars. So our specific identification again, we specified uh, which uh, the number of units here uh, from the specific inventory uh, inventory item that we had here at that specific price here. We just in this case, we decided that we we're going to sell 1,000 here out of these 2,000 items here and 3,000 items out of these 6,000 items here. So now let's go and do our calculations here. Uh, inventory, we would normally be looking at the inventory purchased here plus the beginning inventory amount here to determine what our inventory total inventory would be here but I'm not using any a beginning inventory I'm just looking at the inventory purchase for the period here so to determine our total inventory value here we just take in this case the quantity that we purchased here times the unit price that we purchased them at and in this case we uh, come up with these values here of our inventory values. In this case, we had 16,000 here on June 1st, uh, 52,800 on June 15th, 19,000 here on June 30th. Total inventory value here for the period here was $87,000. $800. Now to determine our ending inventory, well that's just based on our specified units here that we used out of our inventory. So for a remaining inventory, remember that uh, June 1st here we had 2,000 items in inventory. We specified that we would sell 1,000 of those items here at $8 each. So it leaves us with an remaining inventory value of 8,000 here. And on June 15th here we specified we're going to sell 3,000 of the 6,000 units here that were purchased purchased here or in our inventory and so that leaves us with a balance here of $3,008.80 each for a quantity here of a, a dollar value of the inventory here that we sold of 26,000 or dollar value of the inventory remaining here at $26,400 and then on June 30 of this June 30th purchase here of 2000 well we didn't sell any of those we didn't specify that we sold any of those here so that leaves the total amount here at 2000 at $9.50 each. So uh, that equals $19,000. So summing those amounts up here, our ending inventory would be what's remaining here, the 6,000 units total amount here of $53,400. Now uh, again to calculate our cost of goods sold. Well, what were our cost of goods available for sale? That was the $87,800 worth here that we 
calculated for our inventory purchase plus our beginning inventory. Beginning inventory was zero in this case, so the amount here was $87,800. And then we would subtract out our ending inventory here. Well, we calculated that here to be $53,400. So uh, taking the uh, 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 subtracting our 53,400 from 87,800 gives us our cost of goods sold here of $34,400. Now we can go back up and look at that here, but before I want to get into that here, I just want to uh, understand here this inventory here, how we calculate it. We take our beginning inventory, in this case I just assigned it to zero, plus the purchases for the period here of $87,800 minus, uh, that gives us our total available uh, inventory. That that we have here the beginning plus the purchases avail total available amount and then we would subtract out our ending inventory whatever that is and that gives us our cost of goods sold so going back to this cost of goods sold here we calculated that here based on these uh, the cost of goods available less our ending inventory the cost of goods sold 34,400 and if we go back up here and look at this specific identification here where we uh, actually taken uh, specified the uh, number or the units out of each one of these inventory layers or inventory quantities here we come up with the uh, you can see here we sold the 4,000 units at 34,000 four hundred dollars that was the based on the cost of goods available for sale less the ending inventory we calculated so just to review here when you're using the specific identification method here you're going to have some inventory amounts here at specified prices so what you do is you just uh, pick out whatever uh, inventory you want here at that specified price and that would be what you would calculate out here for your uh, inventory values that you sell and whatever remains that would be what uh, would be in your ending inventory here and then you would calculate your cost of goods sold off of that.